I've got some scriptures out of Nehemiah. Uh, see. Chapter t 2. And then I'll be over in chapter 4 here in a minute. Nehemiah chapter 3. And what we're getting into here is a time that Nehemiah set out to build the walls of Jerusalem. And it said then, it's verse 17 of chapter 2. It said, Then said I unto them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and his gates are burnt with fire. Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that will be no more a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, and also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. And then it went on to say in verse 20, Then I answered them and said unto them too, The God of heaven will prosper us, Therefore we his servants will rise and build, but you have no portion, nor right, nor mural in Jerusalem. In verse 19, <clears throat> it says, here talking about the enemy now, and despised us when they heard about it. He said, when they heard it, they laughed us to scorn, and despised us and said, what is this thing that you do where you rebel against the king? As you think about and read about this wall that they were about to rebuild, it was an absolutely a mess. It had burnt, crumbled, and everything else just piled up in rubbish. Grown up probably bushes, briars, and everything else. But they set out to build this wall, Nehemiah did. And I want to say to you that I have said many, many times, when you start out to do something good for God, you birdie have your guard up because the devil's going to fight you. I know I have warned this congregation many times, but I'm here to tell you it'll happen every time that God's people start out sincere to do something for God. Now, Nehemiah and them, they started to work. And the first thing that they had done, Nehemiah did, he knew that he was facing a problem. What was their Sunday school lesson about just a few Sundays ago? When you start out in a service, pray. When you start out to work for God, you pray. When you start out to read the Word of God, you pray. Nehemiah 4 and 9, they was going to keep an eye on this enemy. You know, as I look back to this church now, we are in a new place. We've been, what, about a year, ain't it? A little over. To build this building. We was in a process about nearly 30 years of making up our mind to build one. But our enemies was telling me that there'd never be a church built here. But as I read in the book of Nehemiah, 
When you go to work for God, you'll meet the enemy head on. All things is possible with him. So Nehemiah 4 and 9, he said, Nevertheless, we make our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. What I'm trying to tell you as a child of God, pray and keep your eyes open and have a sober mind, which is a level head. Because you are going to meet the devil and prayer by the word of God and doing what God tells you to do, you got to feed over him. First Peter 4 and 7 said, But the end of all things at hand be you therefore sober, watch, and a prayer. So before this thing got started and Nehemiah got started, I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of praying going on. And as we see uh, down the line, they had to do just like Nehemiah did in the Bible to get the wall built. The enemy will hinder you. He will hinder the work of God. He will try to stop you. And next thing you know, you'll give in and be out of fellowship with God. Nehemiah 4 and 8, listen to what he said. And conspired all the them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem to hinder it. Soon as they was getting ready to build this wall, the old devil was preparing to come in there and to hinder them. And as the devil will try to stop you, and he'll try everything in the book to do it. Nehemiah 4 and 11, listen to what he said. Our adversity said, they shall not know. He said he won't know what's happening. And he said, neither see till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. He said, now we can sneak in there and they'll never know that we're coming. They'll never see us and we can destroy them and stop the work. So Nehemiah and his people, they had some trouble there. And Nehemiah 4 and 10 said, Now Judah said the strength of the bars, of the burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish in there, so that we're not able to build the wall. There they go, starting some of them to have a doubt. We can't build it. There's too much rubbish in there, and here's the enemy. But listen to what Hebrews 12 and 1 tells us. Whether for sin we also compass about so great cloud of witness, let us aside every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to tell you this congregation run with patience with this church when it had been built. I want to tell you, you may not drove a nail or set no windows or something like that, but every one of you had a part in building this church. Amen. And your part was just as important as my part as anybody else's part. And they said the strength of the bars is too much. I want to tell you when you confront things in this walk of life and the old devil start hindering you, that's the time to get down on your knees and draw a little closer to God. 
And one good thing it is, stay close to him before the old devil gets there. And you prepare a way to beat him. 1 Peter 5 and 8 said, Be sober, be vigilant, because you are bursting the devil is like a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's out to get you. And he will get you if you just don't watch out. What did Nehemiah and his people start doing? I believe that we did just like we did here at Cummins Mill. They got ready to fight the enemy. Stand up what they believed in and focus on Jesus Christ. They kept their weapons near and at hand. Your weapons is the Word of God. Amen. Use it for a weapon. Nehemiah 4, 17 and 18, listen what he said. They watch those which build on the wall. They that bore burdens with those that laid, laid every one with one of his hands rough with the work and with the other hands that he held to weapon. That's what you and I got to do. We'll work with God and we take his weapon with us. For the builders, every one, it said, had his sword girded by his side and so built, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Each one of you are a watchman to watch out for the enemy. And if he gets near, you need to warn somebody that's in leadership to help control. So they kept an eye on him, and the man with a trumpet, he was ready to blow when the enemy come. Ephesians 6, 10, 11 said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You and I can do that if you are a Christian. You can do it. Ephesians 6, 14, 17, he says, Stand therefore and have your line skirted about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, for with you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the whole armor of God that you and I are supposed to have on. And when you got that armor on, you'll be able to walk and stand in this world you and I live in. We should fight with the Word of God. We should fight with prayer. We should fight with a forgiving spirit. We must fight with the faith of believing that God's going to give you the victory. And He will. As we go on, let's look again what He had done. Nehemiah and his people cooperated together. There's in unity. I was watching and uh, just before the service started. It sounded like you was in a room with a bunch of geese. Everybody was a talking. <laughs> and they was going around hugging one another, talking to one another. And that tells me that this church has got unity in it. And I'm proud of that and God is too. And so Nehemiah and them, they work together as a group. I'll tell you, I believe every one of you here got to say, when you stick together with the things of God and hold in there, you will do something for Him. So Nehemiah 4 and 6, so build we the wall. They said, let's get on with it. And all the wall was joined together in half thereof, for the builders, had, the people had a mind to work. They saw the light. They went to work. 
And Nehemiah 4 and 21 tells us about they that work. He says, So we labored in the work, and half of them helped the spear from the rising in the morning till the stars appeared. I've seen some here at this church work from daylight to after dark. I'm telling you that the Amaz people, they have done the same thing. They was in there and they were the building a wall. Listen to what he said in Revelation 2, 2 and 3. He said, I know thy works, thy labor and thy patience. I'll tell you, when you labor, when you work for God, you have patience in that. God will honor you. And he said, How thou canst not bear them which are evil. I'll tell you what, I hate sin, but I love the sinner. I've been told down the line, he said, You'll never go nowhere. He said, You're trying to build a church on drunks and drug addicts and things like that. And I said, I'll tell you what, that's what my God will give His Son for. Amen. And I said, when you get one of them saved, you have got somebody they remember where they come from. Amen. That's what's wrong in this world now. There's so many of them don't love and are concerned about those down in the gutter. That's where you need to be. I'll turn the places out in the highways and hedges where nobody else goes and fill in the gaps. And he said, We have uh, has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. I'll tell you what we sit in here today and we can see the labor and we can see the blessings of God. Amen. And now I'm telling you, God has blessed. And if you sit down and tell people what all He has done, and not only in this place, but the other one right over there, they, I believe it would be hard for them to believe it. We've seen people healed. Amen. We've seen many of them saved. And I've seen people, and there's some in here, that I know that God has put extensions on their lives. Amen. We've got so much to rejoice about. The enemy of the devil will try to destroy work. He'll destroy you. And he'll try to destroy the things of God. 1 John 4 and 4 said, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Greater is he that's in you than he's that in the world. You and I tonight, we have power through Jesus Christ. It's not us, but it's him through us. And it's not us doing all the work. It's God is doing it. Amen. We're just laborers. And you know, I believe that it ought to be an honor for you and I for God to deal with us on to do something. Right. It ought to be an honor that God can use you. Job 8 and 20 said, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will He help the evil doers. And I tell you, God has helped this place. Amen. And not only that, He's helped the people. Why? I'd say that down the time here, I'd say every one of you have several times maybe had to rededicate your life because you're afraid that you're losing your strength in God. Amen. We've fought the pandemic down to now. We fought where you couldn't get no material to work with. All sorts of things. Couldn't get equipment to come into work. It is absolutely a miracle that we even got the material to go up, much less to build a building. It's amazing. But most of all, the building's not hit. You're hit. God's people. Each one of you is a brick on His building. One of these days, according to the book of Revelations, the last invitation in the Bible. 
You ought to say it come. Those that hear it come. Those that thirst come. And everyone that will come take the water of life freely. One of the, that's the last invitation. And Jesus will come. And it'll be closed. No more opportunities to make heaven your home. And I'm going to tell you the way things is in this world, it could be just any time. Any time. I can't find things in the Bible to really not fulfill much. It's all there. And when God gets in something, it can happen in just a few minutes. He knows what He's doing. If you're here and you're not saved, my prayer is accept Christ before it's too late. If you're not living for Him like you should, rededicate your life where God can use you.